This is MS Talks 2.0, let's discuss facts. Thank you for tuning in. We have a very interesting topic for you today. We're covering listening to your gut. Over the years, there's been lots of information released about the gut and its influence on your well-being. It seems that changes in the gut bacteria or microbiome have a direct impact on the immune system and may even play a part in someone's susceptibility to autoimmune conditions such as multiple sclerosis. This isn't such a crazy notion, considering 70% of the body's immune cells are located in the lymphoid tissue that lines the gut. Here with us to discuss this topic, Dr. Ahmed Shatila, consultant neurologist in the Department of Neurology at SSMC Abu Dhabi. Dr. Shatila also manages the Multiple Sclerosis Clinic at Sheikh Shakboot Medical City. Dr. Shatila is also the chairman of the Medical Advisory Committee of the Nashville Multiple Sclerosis Society in the UAE. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you, Casey, for having me. We really appreciate your time, Doctor. Uh, to kick right off, can you tell us what gut bacteria is? First of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be here. The gut bacteria, actually, it's a very complex uh, organism, if you want to think about it. There are trillions and trillions of bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites that live in our gut. And each group, and this, these trillions of organisms are unique to every single person. And they change based on our diet, based on how what we eat, our, our activities of daily living. And then we get and we're first exposed when we're born through our mothers. And it changes when we're sick, changes with our diet. And of course, there's a lot of evidence now saying that your bacteria may play a role with your immune system. Wow, it's so fascinating. And I'm so excited for our discussion today. Can you also explain the impact of gut health on your overall health and well-being? That's an excellent question. So in regards to your gut health, we know that the gut and your gut bacteria isn't just there for no reason. Your gut bacteria actually plays a very important role in making vitamins, digestion, and also overcrowding other bad organisms that could potentially be bad for you or cause diseases. So they're actually there and they serve a purpose. And so when these bacteria are actually either dead or the composition changes, it can actually change your overall health and well-being. And there are things that we do that can make the bacteria more healthy or less healthy. Westernized diets, high in fats, high in sugar, low in fiber has been shown to cause more of a pro-inflammatory bacteria state, while diets that are healthier, high in fiber, low in fats, low in processed sugars, seem to play more with a healthy side of bacteria. And why is that important? Because If you have pro-inflammatory bacteria, it's been shown actually in mice as well as in people that your MS could get worse. And it's been shown also that people with MS do have a different composition of bacteria compared to people that do not have MS. So one thing you said there is things that you can do. Could MS be preventative if they, people looked after their gut health? So MS, it's a very complicated disease in the sense Even though it was first described in 1866, we still don't really know why people get it, or we don't have really one cause for MS. It's thought to be multifactorial. Diet, sunlight, genetics, maybe a little bit of, maybe you were exposed to something, a virus, when you were younger. And all of these play different, uh, they have different roles to causing MS in certain people. If you want to look at it like the perfect storm. Now when you add the gut bacteria, this is just an additional piece to this very complicated puzzle mm. to what is causing MS. But now the thing is, does the gut bacteria actually play a role? It appears more and more that yes, it may play a role. It may cause uh, the diets we eat or the foods we eat may make you more inflammatory or more prone to a relapse. Interesting that it can play a role, but do you think that uh, MS could be cured through Uh, gut bacteria? Cured, I think, you know, be, not, I don't think we're at the stage right now where we could say curing MS can be done just by your gut bacteria, but there are studies actually being done looking at if you can change the ratio of healthy versus unhealthy gut bacteria, either through the use of probiotics or even fecal um, uh, microbiota transplants, where actually they do transplants of fecal flora from one healthy person to another person with the idea that maybe the disease can be stabilized because wow. it's been shown in mice. It's, it's a very 
novel idea, so new, and it sounds at first you you would cringe because it's sounds, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's it's a cringing idea, but yet it's been shown that if you were to transplant bad bacteria from one mice who have MS to other bacteria or to other mice who don't have MS, you can increase their risk of getting MS by just transplanting bad bacteria from one gut and putting it in another mice, mouse. So the corollary or the opposite, they're being looked at. And of course, there's the idea that can you change your gut bacteria without getting the fecal transplant just by eating healthy mm. or maybe by certain medications that would change our natural composition. So, so there's a lot of research in this field. And this leads into the next question. What can people do uh, in general more commonly to, I guess, just to improve their gut bacteria? You know, so when I think when we look at what we can do, it all goes back down to the simple question, what can we do to live healthier or be healthy people? So yes, there's a lot of evidence saying that your gut bacteria may be having a role with inflammation, may cause your disease to get worse. And it's been shown in certain studies to have these effects. But we also know, even if you don't have MS, there's nothing wrong if you were to eat a diet low in saturated fats, low in sugars, high in, high in fiber, that will make you be healthy overall. You'll have better, you'll lose fat, you'll have better skin, you'll have a better quality of life. And if that by effect makes your MS better, why not? And that's what I tell people. True, keep it healthy. Keep it healthy. <laughs> so you can keep it healthy, but also there's a lot of over-the-counter probiotics. Do you think these are beneficial? So there are certain, so probiotics are basically healthy bacteria and they healthy living bacteria that come either in a pill or in a supplement. Now the idea is, is that if your ratio of good bacteria to bad bacteria is somehow changed by the use of antibiotics, probiotics may actually be shown to be helpful, especially with people that have had antibiotic associated diarrhea. That's where it's recommended to eat some yogurt. Lebne, or take a probiotic to get back into this healthy bacteria. But now, does that mean that you should be buying probiotics because you have MS? We don't have that answer yet. So I would say no. That's so interesting. And do you have any final words of advice for people who are looking at gut bacteria in relation to MS? Thank you, Casey, for that last question and very important topic overall. The gut bacteria, is, like I said, is extremely important. And we're just beginning to understand what, how the gut plays a role, not just with our overall health, but also with our brain, and in more particularly with MS. So what we know, if you eat healthy, high fiber foods, low fat, low sugars, it may actually help not only help your MS, but it will definitely help your overall well-being, which has also been shown to help your MS. So I think it is very important. Your body is your temple. Take care of it and let's stay tuned for the future and see what it holds. Very important uh, final piece of advice. We really appreciate your time on the Thank whole you. topic. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. That is all we have time for an MS Talks 2.0. Let's discuss facts.